Entire books have been written on the subject of Darwin's psychological problems. I found this paragraph interesting. He suffered from depression, agoraphobia, fear of crowds, insomnia, vision alterations, hallucinations, malaise, vertigo, shaking, tachycardia, fainting spells, shortness of breath, trembling, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, muscle twitches, spasms, tremors, cramps, colics, bloating, headaches, nervous exhaustion, dyspnea, skin blisters, tinnitus, and sensations of loss of consciousness and impending death. Think he had a little guilt <laughs> for assaulting God? Now, if you want to pick Darwin for your hermeneutical genius to interpret Genesis, you just need to know that. <laughs> According to his own testimony, he said his problems began at 16, and by the time he was 28, he was virtually incapacitated by mental illness. Spent the last 43 years of his life as virtually a mental invalid. And yet, his book has redefined the worldview. I don't think you're going to get sweet water out of a bitter fountain, do you? Or good fruit off a bad tree. Creation cannot be understood any other way than by believing the revelation of the Creator. He's the only one who was there. He's the only one who knows. Creation has no connection at all to science. Creation was not a scientific event, as if natural law played any part at all. It played no part. Nothing explained by science happened in those six days. Nothing. All that is left for the reader then is fidelity. Either you are going to believe the Scripture and be faithful to the Scripture, or you are not. But don't come and impose Charles Darwin on God's holy word. 